That will be bring me on nicely to my next question. We have actually a question from your beautiful other half, Claudia mm. McDonnell and teammate. So um, this will be your question now that you want to answer. Is it true there's a photo of you floating around in full England training kit? <laughs> Please say no. Oh, That's no. ridiculous. Have you oh, said no. Have you? Have I you? don't have it. Claudia has it. Um, oh. Say photos real? Say photos real. Oh, um, oh the show. I'm out here. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Joe presents House of Rugby, United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. Hello and welcome back to House of Rugby URC. We've got a jam-packed show for you this week, guys, with all four provinces in action. Um, as always, Mr. Love Island. Great to <laughs> Mr. Love Island. Oh my God, it was so long ago at this stage. Yeah, I'm great, man. Having a great week. The sun is shining in Dublin again, so it's nice to be uh, back in studio also. We have a lovely guest that you're going to introduce now as well. Yeah, filling in for Megan, who's uh, away this week, is an Ireland legend, Lindsay. Thank welcome back to the show again. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me. Very yes. exciting. It's always good when the prop gets called in for a winger as a replacement. <laughs> we always want to be in the backs. And one of my best friends, my roommate, Kleena Moonface Maloney, is here that we're going to interview. And I am very excited. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. You're going to let lovely her away intro. with that Moonface comment. Oh, look at it. I've called her worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's great to have you on. It's great to have you in as well, Lindsay. Last time we had you, you were sitting in that seat. You were the guest. Now you're the presenter. So it's great to be teaming up with you. Absolutely, we'll be firing questions at Kleena. So, yeah. no, absolute uh, privilege to be here, which is today, um, and especially with the guests that we have in. So. Yeah, 100%. Thank you very much. Looking forward to the show, and we have a lot of URC analysis that's coming up. But um, firstly, we want to talk to you, Kleena, seeing how you how, how are you, first of all? You played yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, good. A uh, bit tired today. We played up in um, the CBS Arena, which was formerly the Rico. Uh, so, we were up in Coventry in the men's ground, and we had a brilliant first win, I think, ever in, well, in my time in Wasps anyway, but in, in kind of since it became the Premiership and Ringfist and stuff, it's the first time we've beaten Harlequins. So, oh, class. Um, yeah, big win for us. And they were last year's champions. So it was a kind of a bit of a, I think it might be the turning point in our season, which is nice. Oh, brilliant. So, good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and how, how did you play yourself? Did you think you had a good game? Yeah, Midland, we, I'd say we won the set-piece battle, to be fair. Um, Harlequins are missing Amy Cocaine, you know, English hooker. Yeah. Um, so that's a big loss for them, first scrum and line-out. But... Um, other than that, we had some of our sevens back. We had Meg Jones back. She played incredibly well and kind of set the backs alight. Um, so that was really helpful. And it was just it was a sunny day, so it was nice to nice to play up in the stadium. And yeah. uh, we stayed up there the night before as well. So was... now I have a question for you, Cleaning, because I think there was a Twitter challenge put out between Railway Union and Wasps yesterday, was there not? There, there was, was scrum off. There I was. Believe. There was. And I still think we will win this hands down. But I want <clears> the <throat> date and time we're going to have this scrum off. I actually watched your match yesterday. Uh, firstly, congratulations. I was roaring at the telly. I'm sure the neighbours were wondering what this mad album was screaming at next door. But where does that put you now? Because I know it was a much needed win as regards chasing the playoffs. So. Is that where you are at now? Have you a realistic chance of making the last four or what do you need to rely on to, for we, that? To... We do. So we're on a Six, six Nations break now. Um, uh, we were looking to get at least four points out of that game, but, you know, we came away with bonus point wins, so we get five, which is brilliant. Um, there's also a bit of kind of change up elsewhere in the league. You had Bristol uh, draw with Loughborough, Loughborough Lightning. So that's a good result for you. That's a good result for us, yeah. And then it will kind of depend when we come back together after Six Nations um, and the league starts back up. We've got Gloucester at home and Sarri's away. So uh, two difficult games, but they'll kind of be the... This puts us in a good position to finish top four, but we do need two big performances mm -hmm. still in Gloucester and Sarri's. So would two wins guarantee us, or do you, is it two wins and other results? Probably two wins and then other people... Nothing crazy happening elsewhere, maybe, you know? Okay. It's great to hear you're playing good rugby. And like I just want to kind of acknowledge that you said Six Nations happened there, the yeah. Irish squad. You unfortunately didn't get picked. How do you feel about that? Yeah, devastated, obviously. You know, yeah. everyone, you always want to put your hand up for to play for your national team. Um, but look, there's like, it's a change in time, isn't it? You know, we haven't qualified for this World Cup. Um, yeah. So it is a bit of a transitional time for us. We've got a new head coach um, in Greg, Greg McWilliams. I haven't actually been in camp at all yet, so I haven't had the pleasure of you know, seeing how things have changed and how we're going to move on or what system we're going to play and yeah. where I would or wouldn't fit into that, you know, I, I, I couldn't say. But yeah, disappointed not to get picked, but look, it's not, um, 
I don't know too much about it yet in terms of anything other than its form. You yeah. know, the same stuff that's in the media is what I know. So yeah, obviously it's um, going to hurt. Of personally not getting picked is always sore. I've been there a lot of times myself. But there's some serious names that weren't picked, like Seninupu wasn't picked, Anna Caprice. So like, there, it must be a kind of a, what, a changing of the guards is, is what's going on. You know better than me now, but. I think probably, and Kleena correct me, I suppose, like she said, you know, we're still devastated and not qualifying for the World Cup. Um, so Greg coming in, I don't know him either. From what I know of him, he's a really good guy. Um, he's obviously a lot of experience with the USA 7s and he was involved with the 2014 very successful um, women's 15 team that went to a World Cup semi-final. Yeah. So um, at this stage, his choice probably is if I was the coach, you kind of need to look at now, we need to use games maybe to blood new players. I still personally would have Clean Maloney side by side with me and in any squad, uh, but that's my personal preference. That's not on any decisions made elsewhere. But um, you have to, for me, strike a balance because we're now going into a Six Nations with five teams that are going to a World Cup. So yes, mm -hmm. if we're going to blood new players, that's great. But we need to be honest then and realistic where we could finish in this Six Nations, which is fine. You know, we we mm -hmm. have four years now to build to another World Cup, yeah. and it is we do need to deepen our squad. You know, there's fantastic players out there that need game time and international experience. But um, yeah, I suppose only really Greg can answer that, what his plan is. But um, yeah. yeah, hopefully clean and be back in. Did you get to speak with Greg Williams? Uh, briefly, like as I said, I hadn't been in camp or anything. So there's no been, there's been no, you know, selection feedback on how I'm playing in camp or anything like that. Just that yeah. I wasn't selected based off form. It's the same. I don't know anything, yeah. anything other than that. Um, but uh, hopefully get back in camp at some point in the future and then well, maybe that's it. Yeah, there's a full on. Six Nations campaign to come, so who knows, yeah, you could exactly, be in, yeah. Yeah, like, in the next couple of weeks. Everything I seem to say in this podcast seems to be like the reverse of commentator curse and it happens. So, yeah, honestly, it's happened a couple of times now. So. <laughs> I knew you love me, you're like the yeah. genie of Aladdin. Yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we'll have some more questions too uh, yeah. coming up later in the show from the audience. Nothing too bad, like we also a bit of fun with our 10 questions. Yes. Well, we didn't grill you too much when you were on, or did we? Well, uh, uh, you yes, managed, so you were fine. You Look, we'll put out a fire <laughs> extinguisher. Is that there? But uh, let's look back on the, the URC action. So there was two high scoring games on Friday. Um, up first, a uh, big win for Ulster, keeping the chase up on Leinster. 48-12, um, they defeated Cardiff. But Ballet, Robert Balakoon scoring a couple of absolutely brilliant tries. So it's great to see Ulster. Really. Yeah, I think Ulster have been hugely consistent this mm. year. And uh, obviously then they have injuries coming back in. Henderson, John Cooney. Um, so a couple of big names, Jack McGraw obviously back after long term injury. Mm, so yeah. their depth British and Marsh experience line. of their squad is doing mm. is serving them very well this season. So yeah, long Jordan Murphy continue. and Stu Stuart McCluskey were back in as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, like, yeah. yeah. It was good to see Jordan Murphy as well. Back yeah, so it's nearly their full team back playing, and they were they were really really good, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I liked was that actually they had a spread of different tries. Do you know there was a crossfield kick from. Um, did you see that? Billy Burns, Billy Billy Burns, Burns yeah. kick. It was a nice bounce, wasn't it? Bounce of the ball. You'd be raging if you were on the other side of that, but uh, he took it took it very well, Balakoon. Yeah. Died yeah. it right in. It was yeah. great to see the guys, the young guys in the Irish squad playing really well. So Robert Balakoon obviously had two unbelievable tries that we'll talk about later in the yeah. try of the week. James Hume had an unbelievable try as well, intercepted mm. from his own 22. Um, Stuart Moore, I know he's not in the actual Irish squad, but he stepped up. At I, I really like him yeah. as a player. Took his opportunity. Yeah. He got player to match, didn't he? I really yeah. like him. Like, I liked him for a while. Like, and yeah. I was like, mm. we were giving out before that like, we really wanted to see Mike Lowry in there. But now when Mike Lowry's in there, you've got Stuart Morden as well, like, so. Yeah. Ulster also a very good squad, guys. Yeah. And Timoney as well at eight. You know, we had no way after he stood for a long time now. We've, yeah. uh, we've got Conan, even. yeah, we've <laughs> Keelan Doris, and now we've Nick Timoney, who had a great game as well. Yeah, like, yeah. he's really knocking on the door full of confidence, so. He did. He was really dynamic. I was lucky enough to play with him in the sevens. And oh, he no, is yeah, like, he was seven, yeah. He's like 100 kg, like six foot, whatever, too, and he's just as fast as anyone. Like, yeah. Obviously not Robert Balakin, but like normal fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, from, from yeah. Forward, like, normal yeah. human fast. I remember we were training a couple of years ago out in DC, one of the early days in sevens, and he challenged me to a race. And I gave him a full pitch race, me against Nick Timney. He, was, he got a 10 metre head start. I started on the try line and I only, he beat me by one metre. I couldn't catch him up over the whole really? pitch. Yeah, wow. I only got That's nine quick. meters up on him. Yeah, so he was proper quick. And I'm what eighty kegs. He's a hundred yeah. kegs. So. You know what I mean? You're a winger. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like who plays seven is like. A, I know. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. that's impressive. That's we impressive. always get that label, don't we? Mm. Clean and we don't look fast, and then we kind of yeah. are a little bit fast. But to be fair, I did a double take watching him as well. I thought it was a centre. Yeah. I had to go back through the clip and check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we had Ian Henderson back playing as well. Do we think he did enough to be back in for the Irish squad? It's. <laughs> He's br he's good enough to be there. He's like innocent to British Irish line. He's brilliant, but yeah. dude, you can't drop James Ryan and Ty Burnham. I think he might start in the bench for experience, and I think yeah. I was going to Twickenham. You're going to have to have your more experienced squads who won't 
be daunting. You know, they won't find the whole experience, you know, daunting in a full Twickenham and, and English fans roaring at you and the hype of the game. And obviously, Eddie Jones will have something up his sleeve to try and um, no stop our momentum. So yeah. I certainly would have him on the bench. I think we can't probably disrupt that um, Ryan yeah. Tyburn, you know, partnership, especially at the breakdown, because I think that's where England are going to target us. They're going to try and slow us down. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah. But you'd agree that, would you? Would you drop? Would you leave him on the bench? Oh, I'd have to agree with Lindsay. I'd, I'd be having him on the bench. I, you, I don't think you can disrupt that engine room there at the minute. Mm. Mm. Um, they're just so, every facet of the game, they, they offer a lot, you know, every breakdown, carries, line out. Just, mm. yeah. I don't think there's anyone that can Isn't that mad right though, now. like Ian Henderson retained, yeah, I might make the bench. Like, he's a lion and he was the Irish captain before he got injured. Uh, like, Joe, he just, it's just the depth of earth that's there at the moment. It's insane, isn't it? It's great to see, like. Yeah, it's really, it's it's comforting to know the depth of our squad because I think going to World Cups now, what Parish uh, like France twenty twenty three, we need a deeper squad, and that we yes, grand if we have injured, experienced players that we've now as just as good a player coming in. Yeah. You know, if we're really going to make you know shapes in that tournament, we need to now be blood and younger players now. And it's yeah. not that Ian Henderson overnight is not a good player. <laughs> you know, we know that, mm. but that the experience and I suppose. Looking at you now in your situation, that's hopefully what we can look at with the women's squad, that it's not, it's only just hopefully a gap and it's not what you want to see, but that we're taking time to, you know, blow yeah. new players and that, you know, people are chomping at each other's heels to make each other better. Mm. Do you yeah. Know? yeah, difficult for the players, great for the fans, great for the game. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Overall, it's great, but yeah. like uh, personally then for you, we had Ross Byrne on last week, mm. same thing for him. He's playing unbelievable rugby, scored a try the weekend and he's pissed off that he's not in the Irish squad because he's playing yeah, good rugby. Course, yeah. It's just too many... Good Same with Uber we had him on like Luke Graz, and that's what he brilliant scrum after. Yeah. But it's just competition at the yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. So you know, in a look great at Mac Hansen coming in, like we were giving up, going, How the hell did Mac Hansen get in the squad? And look at him now, he's now like, We can't take him out, he's brilliant, yeah. and he's yeah. starting, and he's going these worldly choice. And yeah. everyone was like, Mac Hansen already in the Irish squad? Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. go, like, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Well, to talk again about how good Ulster was, we have some stats. Um, we mentioned Nick Timney there a while ago. He made 72 metres off 13 carries, eight defenders beaten, which is obnoxious. Eight defenders for a back row. As like, a back row. Okay. And <laughs> 19 <laughs> tackles made. I, I make 90 tackles in a season. We made it in one game. Like, yeah, but he's also a forward one. <laughs> we got up for work, you know what I mean? Would you have been up there 90 tackles in your plane in a match? No, we're, it was props to hang around the rook and just kind of look after the nine. Just, yeah, you know, stand there with a pillar with the hand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheeky. That's a Kira Cooney stat, that is. 19 yeah. tackles in a match. Absolutely, yeah. and actually a Cleena Maloney stat. You know, it seems to be the blondes in the Irish squad. Yeah. They go looking for work and anything that's moving, even their own players, they yeah. work on. Um, well, I picked James Hume because for a man who basically had an intercept about seven to ten metres from his own try line when um, Cardiff had turned over the ball just inside uh, the Ulster half and then decided he'd go and intercept. <laughs> if that didn't fall off, now that was a sure try, yeah. but now he just yeah. trotted off for an 80 metre, you know. He's playing with confidence. Like he was very, com- very comfortable, comfortable looking. Very comfortable looking taking yeah. that ball. Yeah. yeah. Well, he had to make a decision there really. What, was 3v1 against him or something? Yeah. Like he either had to jam in and hit the defender or... Go yeah. for the ball, but he caught it like on full, pulled it down. Yeah, yeah mad, well incredible, wasn't it? But there's another situation there when you look at competition in the Irish team. Like, I mean, he's a brilliant centre. He's yeah. up against Bundyaki and Robbie Enshaw, or two British and Irish lines, and then you also got Gary Ringo there. Yeah. So as good as he is, like and he could literally play the best rugby of his life. He's still not going to get into the Ireland team. And no. Chris Farrell, who had a great week. <laughs> Chris Farrell again, yeah. 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 Do you know what I mean? So that's that's good to see a guy's playing that well. He's still even get he's even get a sniff. He's in the squad, but he will not get a sniff to start against England. Yeah, no. No. Well, hopefully you haven't jinxed it now. <laughs> the regular yeah. shakers. That's it, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah blame it. In. Yeah, we had the Edinburgh Connor game as well, then Lindsay, didn't we? Yeah, unfortunately now the Westerners uh, had a dismal performance now, and yeah. they shipped eight tries and came away on the wrong side of a fifty-six eight loss. Yeah. Um, they weren't really themselves, to be honest. They gave away four tries in 14 minutes and they only had 35% possession so I don't think any team as good as they are to have such little ball and play defence and I thought um, Kinghorn and Dean were very good they just ran the shows they just kind of put you know Kinghorn was putting people in gaps left right and centre and they just dragged kind of from one side to the other and just yeah. picked holes in them you know oh, it's so, really yeah, easy Connacht are obviously very inconsistent this year but like, that's still like I thought shocking. it was shocking like mm. for them to go 56-8 yeah. and to, to add on to your stats they were 8-0 up after 30 minutes nearly 30 minutes then 56 unanswered points Like yeah it was that line out that was stolen in the 28th minute wasn't it uh, yeah. they stole the line out and then brought it back on the blind and scored mm. a try and then from from then on they just seemed to completely pick a, pick apart the Connacht defensive system yeah. them, they bought all the hard lines yeah exactly Yeah. yeah. So it and there was 8 tries altogether. so that was what 
in 50 minutes there was mm. eight tries like if you start doing the maths on that's that mad. that's just but they just struggled a bit of form together as well like mm. and you know, they're yeah. still six in the table they're cut Leinster now with their next game after after the break like so yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean so yeah, I don't know exactly. Connacht, like, Connacht, I, I remember like the first few weeks we did the show and Connor had like a couple of brilliant wins and then like, they'd, they'd lose to the Dragons they lost to the Dragons like and mm. I was like, you, you must be pulling your hair out as a Connacht fan because they can literally show up and they, they beat Stade Francais and stuff in there. Do you know what I mean? I'm they can show up and beat anyone. Yeah, but brilliant rugby. Yeah. Really like nice to watch. And then this can happen. Like, yeah. But I wouldn't it's, be I wouldn't be surprised either if you saw a performance against Leinster because that's that is like, possible. I wouldn't bet against Connacht to beat yeah. Leinster. <laughs> that's no. how mad Connacht are. Like, no, just, yeah, you'd be tuning in next week and you'd be like, dude, Connacht could do this. Like, do we yeah. be into the game? Honestly, God, yeah. they could. Yeah, so it's just, it's not Yeah. Well, like, like even we had Ross Burn, as I said, on last week and he was complimenting their attack play. Yeah. Like, he's an out half for Leinster and he's like, yeah, yeah Connacht are good. Like, Andy Friend's a good coach. Like, he's yeah. the one and they could, Connacht got some serious backs that can move. Yeah. And they look to play the ball. They look to play a very expensive game. Like, but, they do well, like obviously they lost 56 8, but they still had some good performances. Oshin Dowling played well, Connor Oliver had another good game. Mm. Um, and just another, yeah, another <laughs> there's pal. another guy who's in the, can't get near the Irish squad and he's playing out of his skin. But Raining. come on, look at the back rows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he came on as a replacement last week. I was very impressed when he changed the game, Connor yeah. Oliver, didn't he? Um, yeah, I'd be good. I, I lived with him for a while. I played with him once. Sir. His, his mindset, he's just different, gravy like he's just so aggressive, just yeah. really, really dynamic. So I'd love to see him get near an Irish squad, but there's just no spaces like really left is there <laughs> no and he actually was a type player I'm surprised because you know yourself when you're on the back foot and you're shipping tries and people are picking apart and your set pieces and working mm. there's nothing, nothing you can do in a game of rugby but I thought Oliver last week was kind of bringing the game he, he kind of reunited them against the Stormers last week when yeah. they were kind of <laughs> flitting in and out um, Prendergast has been kind of good as well but for such a young player to try and take that on yeah, yeah. Um, and I think with the talk of Dooley and probably Adam Byrne going to Connacht next year I think they'll be great because they won't lose them to an Irish setup, so yeah. they'll have stronger, more experienced players throughout. Because I think Josh Murphy's going as well, yeah. which is great. Because yeah. say when Bundy goes into Irish camp, like that's not only the caliber of player, but it's the leadership, it's yeah. the the game management, it's the tactical, you know, it's the game insight that he can change. Yeah. And I think hopefully with some of the additions, um, we'd see a more consistent season yeah. for them. But is that what you think is a surprise one? Yeah. It could be a big sign in, like. I was I was shocked to see that Seattle Bergen. He's a cla- he's still a very good player. But if you yeah. see of all the contracts that they've signed, how do you balance all the? Yeah. How do you balance the books? Do you know? Mm-hmm. So split, I think split, it'd be split, one split mil for him though. Split it in two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have the wages one week. Split it in two. Yeah. Is that where you think Connacht are going wrong? That they just don't have the elder leadership that's to keep them through the season. I don't know. When you've got inconsistent performances like that, it's really hard to put your finger on it. We were through this year a little bit with wasps, and when it starts to be. When you get on the back foot in a game like that, as Lindsay, Lindsay mentioned, when your scrum is going back, when you're not when you're on line out, next thing you know, you're making all the wrong defensive decisions and you're just, you're scragging tackles backwards, backwards, backwards. Yeah. It can feel like the world is against you. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, when they've got Blade and, you know, Carty firing in the halfback pairing and they're yeah. playing their really nice attack in rugby, they can seem unstoppable. Yeah. And it's sometimes just that little mental switch maybe that it's different week in, week out for them. And I don't know what it is. It might be something like missing having the reliability of Bundy, you know exactly what he's going to give you every week. And when that goes, things maybe change a little bit for them. I don't know. See, yeah. I've watched them and like when they're playing, you know yourself, when you have momentum yeah. and you know the, the D, they're putting the D on the back foot and they're struggling and, and that's when gaps and soft shoulders are opening up for them. Mm. But to me, so far that I've seen them, they haven't got a plan B. Do you know, how do you restart the phase play yeah. when you're going backwards, when you have a full line of D in front of you? And that's what I think is is missing, like this great endeavour, but how, who's going to kickstart that so you get yeah. that ball? You have a platform, you can give your backs the ball to get mm. that expansive rugby kickstarted. Um, and that's where I think, unfortunately, the inconsistency has come in for them. Yeah, exactly. One thing, just kind of stats-wise, is that they're, they're six in the table, as you mentioned, Jason, mm. but they've played the most games. They have 13 games played, and a lot of teams behind them have games in hand. A lot of Two games or three mm. games in hand. Even Cardiff, they're a good bit behind them at 13th. They've only played eight games. Right. So it was like, as it, as it looks good, the Connors are sitting in sixth, but there's a lot of games we played where they could just start getting knocked back down that table. Mm. Hopefully not now, but... It's just um, why, because I looked like they were up there like and they were going to be within a shout like, for a while. Like, and yeah, now it's kind of a precarious position for them now. The only good thing is the Welsh teams are as... 
that is the Italians. <laughs> oh, Do I say that out loud? <laughs> I yeah. know, there's a, I think it's still a long season to play, but I think they need a bit of consistency, both performance-wise and then the results yeah. of follow right. And as a Westerner, I think you'll appreciate that. I'd like to see you say that to uh, Alan Wayne. <laughs> the Welsh teams are as bad as the Italians. Here. You know how stupid and arrogant I am, so that could be a possibility. You'll you, you end up on a Welsh newspaper like Darren Cave did, like, for giving all about the Welsh teams, like so. Yeah. You've got to be know, careful. They take it very personally, mm. do Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I love, uh, yeah, I love a few Welsh friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, well, well, anyway, we're going to take a short break uh, from the from the analysis and it's our favourite part of the show and soon to be your favourite part of the show. Ten questions. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Can we get a drum roll? No, no. We Let's look your arms there we no. see how much you're snapping with <laughs> <laughs> Nice easy one. I'll start off with a nice lovely soft one to start you off with. Uh, do you think your Gael- Gaelic football career uh, helped the Gaelic football background helped your rugby career? Definitely, yeah. Um, the fi- I've, I've gone back playing Gaelic football a couple of times since. Uh, well, one time in particular, I, I think it was probably the last time just before I moved to England, I went back to play and I could not. I was like a bus. It's like a bus turning when I caught the ball. <laughs> like the fitness is so different. Um, but it was a great kind of foundation for me com- coming into rugby. And I suppose I was always a little bit more aggressive. Would have probably got sim bend here and there everywhere. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just a bit bigger just a bit bigger than them but they were you also you like, bend against me did you not Cleaner Maloney no I think the ref looked at both of us and said this is the, <laughs> which is the lesser of two evils I'm not sure <laughs> we played in uh, college we together we did yeah. uh, Cleaner was slag one night it was DCU yeah. yeah and did you get, get a were you fighting against each other that's why yeah, you both got carded was, yeah did we get both card? No, 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 no. No, we, we were didn't. good. I think the referee kind of looked at both of us and said there's a pair of us in it. So yeah. <laughs> you know when you can't decide whether someone was barging or someone was charging? Yeah. Um, I think she was barging. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have had many fabulous roommates, uh-huh, Clean and Maloney, yeah. but I want to know who is your favourite? Answer wisely. And uh, what is your favourite memory of that said roommate? Uh, does she always fish for compliments? Is it just what she's hosting? You know, it just seems to be, yeah. Well, she's, 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 in, she's in the power chair now, like it's yeah, gone yeah. straight to her head already. I'm sure you know I mean? if you want to be there. <laughs> oh, it has to be you, Lindsay. Thank has you very much. You. I've been your only roommate, oh, but go ahead. Don't blush. We have had more. When we get in trouble, we get separated, but um, no, we were roommates for a long, long time. Normally through requ- request of others, not even us, just be like, put those two agents <laughs> Put those two messers away. together yeah. away from the rest of us. Are you two messers in the team, in the squad? Well, we were, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were. We've been certainly separated <laughs> now, never to return. That's maybe why you're not in the squad, then. Yeah. Mess and, and nothing no. to do with rugby. You have to have a bit of crack. No, you have to. That's the essential characters in the team, like, keep yeah. them around. That's up. why you start playing sport in yeah. the beginning, like, before you mm. get into actually playing at, at your level, like, when you play it as a kid or when you get into it, you play sports. Yeah. Do, you have, yeah. do you have any stories <laughs> for us that we're allowed here? I'll clean up. I have one, do <laughs> Keep it PG now, guys, right? <laughs> well, there's lots. We did so many stupid things. I could think of the time that we put toothpaste in your, your water bottle. Yes. And you, she squirts it all over her hair and burnt her scalp. <laughs> they weren't even expecting me to do that. Uh, they were annoying me, pushing my red button, really getting a reaction out of me. And I was like, Rrr, and I sprayed the water and basically toothpaste come all over no my hair. No way. Yeah. Look, you didn't put it in your eyes. Did you actually, you had Emma Galvin as your physio. I did, you? yeah. So we lovely. went into her room and we might have rearranged it. Oh, yeah. And then locked the door again. Oh, poor Emma. I know. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, after lovely. we were kind of felt bad. Yeah. yeah, it was a badly placed uh, prank because we actually all, we loved Emma. Yeah. We had toilet roll everywhere. It was like yeah. her wedding day. We had toilet <laughs> roll draped. <laughs> Good to know you haven't cracked in the team anyway. Yeah. Um, the next question we have for you, Kleena, is you obviously play with one of the biggest rugby clubs in the world, Wasps. And what's it like playing with them? And also, did you find it hard transitioning from Ireland over to a big English team like that? Yeah, so I went in 2018. It was after... Um, I played another season after the 2017 World Cup here at Railway with Lindsay. Mm. Um, and I was just kind of like a little bit lost rugby wise. Um, wanted to improve, but didn't really know how to. And so then um, none of us had really moved over actually to the UK at that point. Like not in a little while. There was a previous Exiles group like the Lynn Cantwells and yeah. a few more of those from, you know, the 2014 era. But um, a few of us were looking to move over at that point because the league was just maybe not challenging enough or we didn't feel like it was challenging enough for the international environment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I moved over to Wasps and it was a big transition. I actually got injured straight away, pre-season, oh, no. pre-season game, my first pre-season game with them. I did my MCL and my knee. Um, so I ended up missing, so half the team were wondering, does this one play rugby at all? I was, <laughs> I was always up watching training with a yeah. knee brace on. Uh, so that, that was probably the most difficult part, to be honest, because... Mm. 
Just as you moved over. Like just as you uh, moved over and you want to get stuck in, take a few lumps out of me yeah. when you can. Yeah, that's how you yeah. bond with the teammates. Like, yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah. yeah, It's all part of it. Hardened you up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you mentioned the AIL there. For, we probably segue from the questions. I would congratulate you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Railway won the women's AIL. We did. Black Rock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Commiserations hard. to Dorothy, who was on the show last week. Sorry, two Dorothy. Yeah. Oh, two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, ago yeah. 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 Uh, no, it was a cracking final. TG Carr, thankfully, um, showed it live. Um, got some great feedback. So it was as much as it was amazing to win. Yeah. And it was, you know, we have a really deep squad. There was a lot of players who missed out on the actual mm. match day squad who were exemplary and had a big input in actually getting the team to the final. Um, so that was tough for them. So yeah. a shout out to everyone involved, the 30 plus players who who were involved throughout the season. Uh, I think actually it was 45 in total that were blooded throughout the season, if I'm not right with that. That's, yeah. that's impressive. So the, that's like, and even our seconds now, or those who have been kind of going in between, have only, they've had, hopefully they play DCU today, I think, and they've had two games, but they've had a lot of cancellations through. Mm. Teams mm. not being able to field. So it was a great day for the club. We won it back in 2019 for the last time. It was up and running, you know, before the mm. pandemic. And um, it was just a great day. And to be fair, a uh, titanic battle with Black Rock. So yeah. there's probably plenty of big days for them to come. Hopefully not at our expense. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, just the work that gone in for the club and, and trying to raise the standards. It's a great day. So yeah. thank you very much. Good stuff. What about, the, uh, what about the night out though? Listen, what happens on tourist right, days on tour, that's all I can say. We live it there, we live it there. I was what? getting video calls at about half seven the next morning. Half <laughs> seven. I don't know whether they've gone to bed yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't no, me at all. You were up at the crack of dawn. Training, yeah. You were in bed. Yeah, that was it, that was yeah. it, that was it. Yeah. I was in video chat and I was still snoring. <laughs> yeah. uh, next question I have for you is, do you have any plans to stay in rugby when you, when you finally retire? I mean... Uh, coaching something like that maybe yeah I probably like uh, coaching wise I'd say I haven't done anything like that yet like little bits here and there with you know clubs or schools but nothing in a high performance level Um, maybe in terms of skill specific stuff so like you say scrummaging or hooker throwing stuff like that that I would be fairly fairly comfortable with Um, but I definitely want to have a lot of experience before I think about going into Mm. proper proper coaching in in high performance environments Mm. yeah um, I do like a bit of commentating, broadcasting stuff. I was mm. lucky enough to get picked for the Sport Ireland. We're running the course uh, for women in sport and broadcasting. Yeah. So I've been doing that the last while, halfway through it now. So, yeah, it depends what happens, really, with the injury mm. and how long I end up playing rugby. But definitely stay involved somehow. Um, yeah. Not sure where my attributes lie. Yeah. Like. Some, some, people, some people want to get straight out of it. like, and Some people want to say it. Like, so it's, it's, yeah. good. it's always a good question. Like, you know? I'm sure you have years. You're, you're, I'm not going to ask your age. You never ask a woman her age. But like, I'm sure you're quite young. I'm 28. Yeah, you're not looking yeah. to retire anytime soon. No, no, yeah. not not anytime soon. But you know, you always want to try and plan. Plan for future. We, we're not in the most lucrative business of ever. <laughs> <Yeah. sport. laughs> I get that. Yeah, hundred percent. We get yeah. to that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we could sh- we could do a show like the two could runners. We? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have said this lots of times. That I know, but like you, I just can't nail you down because you're just waiting for a better offer to come along. <laughs> so that'll move. We can't beyond. afford can't, to get anyone to edit order. it. Lindsay. That will be bring me on nicely <laughs> to my next question. We have actually a question from your beautiful other half, Claudia mm. McDonald and teammates so um, this will be your question now that you want to answer Is it true there's a photo of you floating around in full England training kit? <laughs> Please say no oh, That's no. ridiculous Have you oh, said no. photo? Have you? Have I you? don't have it Claudia has it um, oh. Said photo's real? Said photo's real Oh, oh. Um, oh the show. my I'm god out here. Excuse me <laughs> Excuse me yeah. Right okay it's not a jersey <laughs> It is it doesn't matter. training kit because <laughs> I ended up going out with um, the England girls after they played, God, I don't even know who, it was a game in Doncaster or something. Uh, and I was up there watching and then it was their last game. So I ended up going out with the girls because obviously Claudia's my partner and she was playing. And uh, I ended up staying in the team hotel. So I booked a hotel room in their team hotel because it was nowhere else to stay in Doncaster. Yeah. And woke up in the morning, I didn't have anything to wear. I don't care, Cleaney. You could have gone in your um, birthday suit. That is against <laughs> Irish. Honestly. A dressing I over it better than having gear. Like, I didn't, dressing I didn't wear it outside of the room. I put it on. <laughs> Make a to toga with your around the room. And then I got dressed back into my clothes from the day before. Are you happy? Well, no, I, I'm not, not sure happy. this is going to be one of the most popular house of rugby now. That Blast me. Said that. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Disgusted. Next question. <laughs> oh, wait, could you come on? You're not very good at being angry. We need to work on that. See me after. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, besides, obviously, having England England kit, what else has been a standout moment for you on, in rugby? <laughs> 
Oh, God. Stand up moment for me in rugby. I mean, it went on the pitch, I presume. On any, the pitch. Any big wins stand out? Uh, like, I was really disappointed not to be involved in 2017 when the girls got to the grandstand cider against... Um, against England and they'd previously beaten France in Donnybrook yeah. uh, but that was definitely a standout year for Irish rugby and yeah. we're probably really unfortunate not to back it up that World Cup but even having not been involved you know been a part right up until I got injured before that Six Nations campaign that's probably a proudest to be a part of that team I yeah. think that's um, lovely what a modest even though answer. I wasn't on the pitch yeah fair play that's class yeah. that was, was a really good bunch of people yeah, yeah. they that? took us. Yeah, they did take us under our wing. Well, Kleena had some concept of the game of rugby. I did not. Um, but yeah, Ada Sheegan was someone who um, we're in a WhatsApp group called the Fatties <laughs> because we're in the front row. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Ada just took us under our wing, which is another funny story. Actually, we missed the speech of her wedding because we're in bows and wedding dresses okay. at the bar drinking Guinness, and they locked us out. But that's another day's story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's been a good. Yeah. Um, next question uh, is coming from an anonymous Wasps teammate. Anonymous. Wants to know uh, <laughs> if you're more likely to get stepped on the inside or the outside. <laughs> oh, Lord. Inside, inside, unfortunately. <laughs> Over eager defender. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Shooting up. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, this is probably a tough question, but who is the best player you have either played against or with? And obviously, I will remove myself from this list. <laughs> um, so I love on. the confidence coming from you. I aspire to have your confidence. Thank you very much. Or yeah. just, you know, <laughs> full of SHIT. No, I love. I'll give you two answers, right? Because it's it's a bit of a funny one. With definitely Lindsay, because I played uh, my, my club rugby with Lindsay here. And obviously, I was always alongside her. Not only in the scrum, but in club rugby and international rugby and... Um, in the gym we trained together at half five running. in the morning underneath the Aviva Stadium for, half five yeah, yeah for a long time with um, Ed Lads. yeah with Ed Slatter yeah before we went to work so definitely the best player to play with but the best competitor I'd say I think it has to be and she's in my mind because I met her yesterday after the, the Harlequins game and she wasn't playing she's out with injury but Amy Cocaine I think she's top top class yeah, player top very class. skillful very nice person as well um, just was, loves just loves rugby what was the rugby. most competitive side of it? She kept stepping on the inside? Or? No, 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 no. That's she, not she's right. a hooker or actually can kick. <laughs> she, gets, oh, okay. she gets stepped on the inside she as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. Good answer. Um, so next question from me is, besides Moonface, which is a crazy nickname that you gave her at the start, <laughs> you have an, your other nickname is Onion. What is that about? Two ridiculous nicknames, by the way. Yeah, Moonface because of the shape of my head. <laughs> and my friends are just lovely people. Um, what are you getting bullied? We do like? love you. Mm, yeah, the hair style probably doesn't help either. Everything pulled back. <laughs> um, then Onion is the vegetable game. Have you ever played the vegetable game? No. Do you have to eat the vegetable? No, you have to say the vegetable. So if you're, you know, you might be having a few beverages after, before, probably not before rugby game, <laughs> uh, but after a rugby game or if you're in like camp or whatever. Yeah. You, it actually happened with my first Wasps. Um, we went away for a pre-season tour to Montpellier. No, it wasn't Montpellier, it was the Al Alps. Um, and we went and stayed in some chalets in the middle of summer when there were like ski chalets unoccupied. Nice. And we were cycling up and down mountains and rowing boats and like great crack, uh, very little rugby. And on the last night we were having a few drinks, a few people like this sitting around the table and we started to play the vegetable game. Right. So each person picks a vegetable that they want to be. So I was onion. Um, is onion see, a vegetable? Let's see, let's what do you want to be? Is onion a vegetable? Of onion is a vegetable. Don't know. Is it? What else is it like? A fruit? Mm. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, the the game is that it's a drinking game, and you have to say your vegetable without showing your teeth. Okay. Oh, give us a rendition. <laughs> so you would say mm. onion. <laughs> And anyway, I was apparently so funny that it ended up sticking. <laughs> <laughs> they actually, they actually the call you onion in training. They actually call me onion. That is yeah. so funny. Right, pick oh. a veg and try to say it when I'm showing you shit. Broccoli. <laughs> Carjash. <laughs> Would you have gone for any more yeah. syllables? You couldn't have picked hard one. Like. I know, I don't, I don't take the easy route. And your turn? Like, Carjash. 
<laughs> Action. Right. That is a good game. That's that's one we've got. There's one for our, our viewers and our listeners who again. <laughs> send in um, your videos. Yeah, send in your videos. There we go. We the competition <laughs> going away. <laughs> we can do that in the live episode. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, final question. Nice yeah. handy one. Um, it's kind of more of a follow up on Grace's question about moving over to what? So, so, you've a nice little Irish crew over there. Uh, Kira Cooney's with you, Dan McMahon, Claire Malloy. Like, is it nice to have a bit of a support group over there? Like, especially when you went over in the start and. Yeah, uh, when I went over and started, it was just myself and Malloy that went to Claire Malloy went over. Uh, she moved from Bristol. She was going to London for work and kind of just pursuing other rugby opportunities as well. So we both went to Wasps at the same time. And then I think the year after, Del McMahon came. And then the year after that, Kira Cooney came. And then the year after that, Sam Monaghan came. Uh, oh she, she was actually living over, over in the UK working and she was playing down in Hove, I think, down near Brighton. And she ended up coming up to Wasps. And then this year we've had uh, Shannon Toohey on loan as well. So a heap of us and we've also had a couple of other Irish players Andrew Stock a monster, monster under 18 player mm. um, so there's loads I don't really know what the draw is um, well they're all blonde except for Shannon so you must have and to hit a go. profile <laughs> yeah that must be it that must be it blonde and Irish <laughs> do you have a little yeah. Irish Pirate. click over there or do you hang out with the English girls as well uh, we do hang out with the English, English girls they can't understand <laughs> half of us that's the problem really yeah Yeah, especially especially tricky you tell McMahon yeah, yeah. When we call her home. Twiggy. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously, they hang around together when they go watching England matches with their England jerseys. Yeah, yeah disgrace. Oh, yeah. Oh, disgrace. I'm so upset. <laughs> yeah. <But> anyway. <laughs> well, that was great. I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. That was easy enough. That was oh, all right. Yeah. 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 We'll go back to the URC. So, back to my beloved, Greg's beloved monster. Yes. Back smashing <sighs> tries in against the poor dragons. 10 yeah. tries. 10 bloody tries. Yeah. 64 3. Great performance, mm. yeah. 64-3 against the Dragons at home. They were playing, did you, did you watch the game? I did. Yeah, it was phenomenal. They were just on form. Everything was going to hand. I think it was just one of those days where t- things just clicked for them. Did you get catch it? Yeah, uh, what I'm liked about Munster is they're, they've they kind of gone away from the orthodox, truck it up and a bit more physical. And, and like it's now offload, soft shoulder. It's more exciting rugby. I yeah. think it's in line now with where the game is going. Exactly. And um, the support lines, it's just a joy to watch. And I think we've seen some of the younger players shine and... Yeah, yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah. As younger players, something we were speaking before, uh, yes. before we come on, Craig Casey, two tries, two assists. Yeah. You were saying, you reckon, like, should he be on the bench for the England game? Like, I mean... Oh, like, I think he has to be because we want to move this big English pack and he comes on and he just moves the ball at lightning. Cause <laughs> even, even when he came on against Italy last week, he was just phenomenal. He just, Craig like, doesn't like this. Craig doesn't I know, like it. I, I think he's, he's definitely good enough and he'd do the job. But I just don't... Like, you're going to drop Murray, like. You gotta have Conor Murray in the squad. He's just mm. we close out a game and do his box. Come on, a few, few box kicks here. Do you know? Yeah. Do you, <laughs> you know, know what? I'm not, that's his forte. That's I'm not afraid to change yeah. it. I'm gonna go you, with Casey. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sticking loyal to Conor Murray. Box I just kicks think, don't work anymore. We just need to get away they from don't. that. Yeah. Um, Everyone's sick of him. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, hopefully. Selena, what would you do, Craig? Kay- who would your two scrum halves be for next week against England? Gibson Park and Craig Casey, I think. There you go. Nice. He looks the, the queen has Three against spoken. One. What did Conor Murray do to any of you guys? Nothing. Well, uh, Nothing. Have you got a few minutes and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. We'll see. No, they're both incredible players. I just, I just don't think I think, think he's, he's too he's slow. Do you agree with that? What, how are we going to beat England next week now? What scrum halves yeah. are going to bring to help us beat England now next week? It'll be a gamble, but... Is it a gamble worth taking? Probably, probably is. Um, over he looked very full of energy mm. and after he scored his first try in particular, he was... Yeah, and I, what I liked about his first try is that he looked to go open. Yeah. He noticed his decision-making and he went blind and he took to try himself. I think mm. he's a man who's in confidence. And it's nothing against Conor Murray. It no. genuinely isn't. Yeah. It's a lovely thing. It's a lovely, again, conundrum we have that yeah. we have now, you know, some lovely scrum halves who are all playing. Like you mentioned Luke Murad there as well. So there's even um, scrum halves that aren't involved in the squad. Yeah. So I know, you're so upset. Do you know what's mad? Do you know what's mad to me? I know. Connor. Connor. Just, Connor's just a Limerick man. I just, I'm really loyal to him. But like so this Craig. time last year, not even less than a year ago, Lions Tour was on. Connor Murray oh. was the captain of the Lions. And now people are like, oh, he's I not I still don't think anymore. he was playing his best rugby himself. Sorry. Oh, coming into the Lions Tour, he was playing unbelievable rugby. He did, in my opinion. He had a decent run of form. That's why he got it. He had a decent run, but I still think for the, like, if I, what we needed, and the same with the Lions, we needed a pack that was mobile and ball players to get up against a very physical South African. Yeah. And that's exactly what we need for Ireland next week against England. Because I know, I do not trust Eddie Jones. I wouldn't trust him with me puppy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just next week he's going to have something up his sleeve. And I just think we need to be, we need quick ball. Yeah. Um, and I think the two lads have been shown that. Yeah. 
No, it's, well, if it come, it's coming this next week and we're relying on the subs come half to win the game, I think we're in a problem. So it shouldn't really matter who comes off the bench yeah. at that stage of the game. Absolutely. Hopefully. Um, we should talk about the Munster game, though. And Craig Casey did play incredible. Two tries. But was, as you said, his vision mm -hmm. for the... Was it Chris Clodagh's second try? Where you could see he was just scanning, scanning around and just whips like a 50-metre pass straight out to Chris Clodagh. Mm -hmm. So it's that... He just seems to have like a really old head on his shoulders and yeah. he's seeing these things. You were yeah. really impressed with him, Jason. If he, if, like, I remember going back maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, like when he first started coming in and we were going to the Munster press conferences and speaking and asking about him and every player you ask, like when he was, when he, when he was 18, 19, 20, like he's the last person back training every day, mm. practicing everything, practicing his kicking, practicing his passing. He's one of those guys where you just, you see he's so determined to get to the top. Yep. Yeah, he's going to get there and he has got the skill to back it up as well yeah exactly another couple of lads that played really well obviously we mentioned Chris Clote uh, yeah. even though he's leaving so um, he's going to be a big loss Jack O'Donoghue had another outstanding game yeah. scored two tries what I was really impressed with him was his tracking lines mm. as a flanker as yeah. a six yeah. he was running as if he was, like he was in front of Craig Casey he was supposed to be running those tracking lines so he's another incredible back rower that just can't get into the Irish squad um, and look, Chris Farrell Unbelievable, wasn't he? Unbelievable. And again, he just, like, uh, for Jack O'Donoghue's try, it was him who made the little break and it was ball through hand. And again, you know, his run at score lines, you could have picked kind of two or three months players who could have finished that try. So, yeah, um, yeah, he's a man in form and he's a big man. He got a nice hit as well. He did, yeah. So, <laughs> he's a man in form and another man who can't get his foot in the door for, for Ireland. So. Exactly. And, and someone I was really impressed with in the game was actually Jack Crowley. Who's been getting a lot of time recently, like, and he got, I think he nearly got 80 minutes. Yeah. He did play the full game, mm. but he was, if you watched him, I play again because um, I wanted to see how he was getting on. He was putting people into spaces, he was moving people, dropping balls off. He was like quick hands. I, I was really, really impressed with him. Good to see him getting time because he's battling with Joey, who's going to come back off the Irish squad. And he ha we have Ben Healy there as well, and Jack, three young. Tens like so it's good to see yeah. him stepping up. Um, well, like wasn't a guy trying to sign him there recently, like, so obviously like this guy, he, like he has to be good. Like yeah, he had a couple of shaky games there, like, but he's obviously there's, there's something in him, there's something there. Yeah. Definitely. There. Mm. Monster are up to third in the URC. Do you think they could be him in a show to bring home a title this year, considering they've been? With the excitement in Limerick, I'm not sure we'll be able to cope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we won't see Greg for months. <laughs> um, they could. I don't know, to be honest. I think a lot will depend on people like Craig Casey. And Do you think they need to make some signs? Obviously, they've um, feck a show that they've signed for next season. Van Grand will be going. There's so to be changes in. Do you think the players that they have there, obviously some great young players that you mentioned, Cleote is losing. Uh, we're losing them, so... Matt Gallagher go, is going as well. Yeah. yeah. So do you think... We've seen some great stuff from Munster this year, but do you think they need more players in? And do you think it's going to be a huge impact for yeah. our brand I, I, th I think Fekato coming is a, is, a big, is a big win for them. I was surprised to see him leaving Wasp, to be honest. I didn't didn't see that coming. I thought he had been enjoying his time there and playing quite well. Um, if they can keep their big names injury-free, I think that'll be the biggest thing. So it's all, it's all well and good having the players, but you know, having them on the pitch is mm. nearly more important, isn't it? Yeah, and if they get the big South African man back, mm. you know, and everyone's fully fit, then it'll be exciting season, That's I think, for Munster yeah. next year. It comes from the top as well, though. The biggest thing that Munster have to worry about now at the moment is getting a good coach and taking them in place because yeah. they, we, we've, we've been saying this for, for how many weeks? So Munster have a very good squad. Yeah. So, like, but with their, as, as things stand at the moment, like, there's no backs coach in place, there's no defence coach or head coach for next year. So, yeah, just three very, very important. That's the three signings they got to make for next year. Yeah. they got to be good. <laughs> and essential ones, considering, as I said, the, the way the club game is going, like, it's, you know, there's so much yeah. money into it pumped in it. And if you're left behind, you're going to be left mm. behind for a season. I think they were saying as well, they were saying they were looking to bring a hooker in, and they did bring in a, a hooker from, he's a, a, young, a young guy from, I can't remember his name, though, he's only 20 years of age from, from, from Bristol. Coming in next year, we're like, I like that because I think that, that what that means is they're probably going to give Scott Buckley a chance. And I really like to look at him like he's a young hooker, he played, yeah. played in that Wasp game. Yeah. He was he got man of the match, like so. Yeah. I like that. Like as you were like as you were saying, like you don't like like Fick at all coming in. They could have went out and signed the big name hooker, which is what all the fans want. Yeah. yeah. But like you've got a young fella there who's 21 years of age, who's from Cork, who's absolutely class. Give him a chance. And deserves a yeah. chance. Give him yeah. a chance. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So Munster in a good place in fairness, and for all the chopping and change with the coaches and all that, they seem to be no, he must be training really well. And what I think is happening is the older guys in the team. So you have Chris Farrell there every week. You've, mm. um, 
You have Peter, well, Peter Manning's with the Irish team, but he's obviously in there. You mm. have Rory Scannell, who's been over 100 caps. I'd say those guys are stepping up and just pulling the team together and creating the, which seems to be they're really enjoying their rugby at the moment. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you caught the match, but they were all like laughing, smiling, really enjoying it. So hopefully that carries on now to next season, even into the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals of this, because a couple of weeks ago, Jason was lambasting Munster, saying they were so bad, they were all over the place. And now 64 3 win. So. Oh yeah, see there was only the dragon. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't be like that. Don't man. even start. Sorry, Let's Wales. Bring... <laughs> Apology, yeah. Wales. Again, yeah. we're at you all week, all day. Yeah. So our beloved monster did really well. Hopefully, they continue in that form. Uh, but another ridiculous match scoreline was 61-17. Leinster won away to Benetton and travelled away, and there's a comprehensive win again. The three Leinster players scored two tries, and the front rows really stepped up. You enjoyed that, didn't you? I did, and I think Clean Maloney might talk us through the. Uh, the hooker scores. Yeah, did you watch four, four tries from hookers. A well-oiled um, Leinster Mallin performance, I think. Um, Benton couldn't stop them, could they? No, they didn't really look like they wanted to at times. Um, James Tracy gave them a dig out as well, gave the overthrow for, <laughs> for their try <laughs> later on. But it makes a difference, doesn't it? Um, well, obviously, I'd be one of the front lifters, but you're obviously the hooker, yeah. so it makes a huge difference. They kept going to the back of the line out against yeah, Benetton. It makes they a did. huge difference to the success of your mall because mm. obviously you don't have as much of the heavy hitters. 100%, but high risk, high reward, as you see. And Absolutely. against uh, against another team, you wouldn't want to be giving away those easy ones. No. Yeah, I'm sure James Tracy might say that the lifter didn't uh, lift high enough. Uh, this, this is the problem. Yeah. Right. Listen, yeah. a workman that hooker, wears his tools. The H hooker always gets played. Hooker <laughs> always gets played. <laughs> <laughs> Deservedly so. Well, like, you know, how many times have we been standing there? Yeah, well, they were class. Um, another really good player was Jimmy O'Brien at 15. Been very comfortable in that 15 jersey. Sure, Recently called into the Irish squad. Yeah, he's like he actually kicked as well. He kicked mm. the conversion, which nominated he for European Player of the Year as well. Like, and yeah, after, after those four tries against Montpellier, like he's a good player. He's looking look amazing. It's probably his best season he's had. Yeah, yeah really stepped up. All the O'Briens did well yesterday. Yeah, uh, did. Tommy O'Brien as well. Um, another try seven tackle two weeks in a row. Uh, he's won against for try seven tackles, yeah, Holy brilliant. Lord! Like the one uh, I thought that one last week was good. Like we actually have it coming up on the jukebox later on. Yeah, the one yeah. this week is even better. Like he's. He's, He's really stepped us, hasn't he? Like yeah. some of the, that's what I like. It's no more than Munster. I think Leinster have done, um, we would have had uh, the privilege of Kieran Hallett who's involved with the Leinster under 20s and academy. So um, to see their contracts and the players getting that time at senior level is huge. And obviously it goes back to, you know, young players getting blooded and experience early. And we can see that now between Jimmy O'Brien and Tommy O'Brien and Max mm. Deegan there as well. Scott Penny. I mean, the list is endless. Mm. And it's yeah. nice yeah. games for them against Benetton to... Yeah. Um, I know we can have the argument about Italy and Italian clubs mm. and their national team but at the end of the day you can only beat what's out there in front of you um, mm. and I thought the lads were exceptional and again actually comes back to your point about being happy and I think we can all speak in this room if you're a happy player uh, you'll perform well and uh, mm. Leinster are no different to yeah. look like we had uh, the rugby. Philippe Cadabomi on the show a few weeks back good guy and lovely guy absolutely like you listen to him for hours and hours about rugby but um we were basically on about, you know, they made a change off the ground with the URC and they're trying not to clash with the windows. Mm. So they have the best players available. But then things got messed up again because of lovely old COVID. I'm sorry, we shouldn't mention that word anymore. No, no, no. Yeah. Really yeah. um, <laughs> but like, you know, the, the, that's, that was the thing for me. He was like, but where are they going to get the games? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's what, that's what's helped Leinster the last few years is in those windows, when they had, their entire squad has been international, these guys pop up. Yeah. And that's yeah. why Leinster are just an, a, a machine. Yeah. You know, a production line of constant talent, but they have to have games. You know yourself, no matter how good you are and how much you train, you cannot replicate games. No, no. you can't. Yeah. And you know each other's plays and idiosyncrasies and sure more often than not, myself and herself used to be throwing digs and killing each other because, you know, you were trying to get one over the other. <laughs> yeah, no, Leinster in a very good place. But the lads that are playing, like the Max Eagles and the Scott Pings that you mentioned, are nearly international in quality, like, you know. 100%. The, they, they are the next generation and it's and it does put a smile on your face to know that there's a good bloodline of players coming up into into yeah. green jerseys mm, exactly um, and like a couple of seasons ago those guys would probably be in the Irish squad like yeah. you mentioned Jack O'Donoghue and all those guys as yeah. well there's just like a, so many good players all across the country most of them are in Leinster and a lot of them actually re-signed we had Ross Byrne re-signed his, his brother Harry re-signed Dan Sheen who was he's going to Munster he's not going to Munster I was hoping Dan Sheen would go to Munster <laughs> Ryan Baird as well Ryan Baird yeah. um, Keane Healy um, but a couple of lads actually are jumping over to Galway over to Sports Ground, Adam mm -hmm. Byrne and Peter Dooley are heading to Connacht. How do you think they'll get on over there? Welcome additions, I'd say. Um, Two fine players. As we mentioned earlier on, they'll be looking for a bit of consistency and hopefully they'll kind of get that with a few more 
kind of seasoned heads around throughout the year and for the URC games in particular when the yeah. situation is on. Yeah. What, what I thought was really interesting is that Peter Dooley nearly has 100 caps. Or I think, he just got, got his 100 caps yeah, 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 against Benetton and he's going over to Connacht. Like you never could see someone that far into the career come across. No, uh, that's yeah. that's one thing that definitely strikes me watching the games and kind of looking at how many caps players have and stuff because we just, I don't feel like we get that no, opportunity don't. to play that many games. Yeah. Um, but it is massive and that's that's where they're getting the improvements really, isn't it? Yeah, just it game is. time again and again and again. Yeah, and you mentioned Adam Byrne that he's an incredible player and it's a big loss for Leinster, massive gain for Connacht. But then you have people like Alex Wood and Mac Hansen over in Connacht. Where's Adam Byrne going to slot in like? It's true, yeah. I mean. it's true, but I think like, you're looking at the international windows and stuff, and yeah, like, of injuries, you need a big squad. Like you know, they could have yeah. done with Adam Byrne this week. No offense to those who are playing, <laughs> like genuinely, yeah. you know, yeah. like Mac Hansen is an, exp- you know, he's been having a great season. Like what t- top try scorer am I yeah. right in the in the URC? So to have him out on international duty, um, it's just another caliber of player. That it's not offensive to anyone who's there it's just nice to have the competition so everyone is stepping mm. and, and yeah. you know yeah, playing yeah. at the top level that. and it's yeah. it's no harm to have that because you know um, top players bring a better environment and a more competitive yeah. environment and brings the best out in everyone he can so cover 15 right. as well can't he can cover in the full back like, he, yeah. Yeah. yeah like anyone would be, be probably versatile, four minutes he's a big guy yeah. he's, he's a a definitely more of a winger team. through and through like and he's been scoring uh, every time he's come back so he's out for nearly two seasons mm. with uh, ridiculous injuries that he had unfortunately but he's back in flying form I think he scored I don't know these accents, but nearly every game he's been since he's been back. So yeah. great addition to Connacht. It'd yeah. be interesting to see how they slot in. Exactly. Um, he probably needs consistency as well of of selection, to be honest. Because yeah. with Leinster and the competition that's there, he's probably not getting the chance to, you know, make uh, put up his hand, you know, and get back into Ireland even. Yeah. So if he wants that, or that's his aspiration, or just to even play consistent rugby, I think it's a good move yeah. for everyone. Really. I suppose uh, to kind of add on to your point you said there is it'd be really good for Connacht in a training environment to have these international mm-hmm. level guys training week in week out. Because I don't know if they're going to get anywhere near an Irish squad. So they're going to be there every yeah, week, absolutely. bringing up their young fellas. Um, so hopefully, because Connacht need it, because they lost by nearly 50 points. I, don't. I know. Yeah. Plus, uh, big names will attract other big names. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And exactly. um, we're just getting a result in here. Obviously, we, we know, everyone knows we filmed this on a Sunday. Uh, Ospreys have beaten Zebra 27 22. So nice. Another win for the Welsh sides. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we'll move on to our Troy of the Week contenders. We've got three crackers this week. Um, up first, uh, Robert Balakoon's first Troy. This is a, a really, really unfortunate uh, bounce of the ball for, for Cardiff, but mm. look at the speed of this man. Incredible. Just, That's lightning. He just it, flows. He doesn't even look yeah. like he's working. <laughs> Incredible, just natural speed. I was surprised that Billy Burns did that crossfield kick because the winger wasn't fully up in the line. He obviously kicked it to perfection, but... Um, Do you think he was kicking to the top there? Just no, I feel like it was a crossfield. Like, Had they planned to come on? But for the bounce, it wasn't really on. Like, yeah. It, yep. Unless they're saying the wingers just keep chasing those balls. Here we have Jack O'Donoghue's his try. Chris Farrell makes a bit of a break, gets on his feet, wasn't held. Mike Haley, look at the sport lines here. Look at Zeebo. Zeebo anyway. is like, sick and... Give me, give me, give me. There's Jack O'Donoghue. <laughs> what a line. Incredible work from Jack O'Donoghue. He's just always running that line. His work rate's just top notch. Mike Haley's another player I think that um, is massively underrated. Very He's consistent. had a great season. Very consistent, good player, just, you know. Hasn't given given much of a chance in the Irish team, like, but he's been there since yeah. he came to the Munster. Exactly. And our third uh, nomination is Robert Balakoon again. Stuart Moore is unbelievable here. Bounces out, gives it to Robert Balakoon, who you think would give it back in for two v one to John Cooney, but he just backs his pace. He's no way to score straight down the no. line. There's very few wingers in the world that would be able to finish that try like that. It's just, and but he, he held like, his width well, didn't he? Like it's good defence. Like it's just wait, you're too fast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He literally dropped the pin. He's gone. And he went around a good winger there as well, like so. Robert Balakoon, I can't wait to see him in an Irish jersey again. Yeah. When he played against the States a few months ago, he was incredible yeah. and was doing stuff like that. So we probably won't see him in the Six Nations, but I yeah. can't wait to see him in an Irish team again. We yeah. need to figure yeah. out how we can get like six wingers into the Irish team because yeah. there's so many bloody wingers at the moment. He's just so excited. We need to figure out something. Can we change formation? Can you change formation? Yeah. No, I can't, unfortunately. <laughs> so who do you think out of those three? What's your favourite try? I'd have to go for the forward try, wouldn't I? Yes, you would. Jack Dunhouse, <laughs> I think so. Robert Balakoon's <laughs> were outstanding. Yep. But I can't be. I can't let the forwards down. Fair enough. Support line wins for me. Right, I'm gonna so. go, Jack. Yeah, because he's no right to run them support lines and keep up with the full back or the winger of Zebo, and then he gets the nod. So uh, yeah. I'll also go for the forward try. What do you think, Jason? I'm gonna give it to Balakum for the second try because I just think it's absolutely ridiculous that he just 
and he's gone and it's just like oh, it's so, I love Ross yeah. Yeah. It's like that kind of acceleration is just so rare yeah it's just it's, I love watching it's it it's mind blowing yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd love to have a bit of it yeah exactly <laughs> you know what I mean yeah no I'm incredibly impressed with both the Balakun strikes yeah. but I'm going to give it to uh, the team try kind of of Jack O'Donoghue mm. the build up to it was incredible Chris yeah. Farrell and Mike Haley and all that so um, Munster and Jack O'Donoghue get the get the win this week good week for Munster yeah what a reward you are welcome <laughs> Next up is the jukebox, I think. Um, you bring us into that, Lindsay. Yes, it's jukebox of the week time. And we're going to have a look at who made the cut. And the first up is Tommy O'Brien's try save and tackle against Benetton. Second one in a row. Look at this. Incredible work rate. Like, I love, like, it's the same in the last game. Like, he's doing this, like, and you're, like, winning by 30 points. And, you're, like, he's he's making these ridiculous tackles and tracking back mm -hmm. and yeah. playing as if it's as if they're losing. But um, second up here is, uh, is a big massive carry from James Ratty. James Raddy straight off, yeah. <laughs> straight off the tap. I mean, you can give out about a defence there, but like, that's just a big monster who's trucking his way through there and ain't getting stopped. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then again, like it's like it's not the best. Like Billy Burns trying to tackle him around, he's trying to hug him more than anything. <laughs> yeah, and then our third one is Chris Farrell gets oh. up here and gets an unbelievable <laughs> tackle on Rio Dyer. Um, just had a really good game, Chris Farrell, but that is just meeting a wall, up. isn't it? Yeah. And we've uh, you just you're in that position. You're like you can see it coming. You're like no. Oh, yeah. But he caught the if you can you know it from playing. If you hit the ball, you're just sending him backwards. Oh, like absolutely. A slingshot. Yeah. So Chris Farrell just caught him nicely there. I'm going to give it to him. That's my vote. But what do you think? I think so as well. You love those ones when he's read it. He's read. He's read the attack completely, and yeah. you know there's nothing. There's nothing that player can do. He's he's getting sent home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go for it as well because uh, my reaction when you you just when I seen the hit I was like ooh uh, so it's a winner for me yeah I, I, I'm the exact same like I'm not just saying that because it's monster yeah <laughs> and um, congratulations to Mr Farrell this week, that's that's not fair. monster we're, clean sweep we're being biased like you know yeah but uh, I know it was, it was an amazing tackle um, next up rugby news we're gonna do a bit of Six Nations preview uh, but first we're gonna look at the big. I a few women's game uh, the recommendations that came out so obviously the, the, the whole thing was supposed to be released it wasn't in the end as usual things are it's the way this country works they, they tell us one thing and then do something else but a few key points came out of it so the, the, the appointment of a head of women's performance and Pat Wiss a full time uh, women's 15s national tea programme manager an additional 1 million euro in funding taking the total investment up to 4 million uh, Kevin Potts the new RFU's chief, chief executive issued an apology to the Ireland players while they had not received all the backing and support they deserved. And then obviously the big one, which we'll get to in a minute, is Anthony Eddy. Anthony Eddy. No, but what do you think of the of the this report and what they're doing? Like is, is it enough or they are they nowhere near it? I, I do, I do. I think it's it's been a great piece of work by Amanda Bennett and her company, Fair Play. Um I think it's it's a really difficult one in terms of, you know, what you mentioned about the the review and then the recommendations. Um but if you're if you're to look at it objectively and stand back, you know you would very rarely see the contents of a review, no matter what team, no mm. matter what company, even publicly shared, because there are reasons that you can't, obviously. Mm. And I won't know them, and you won't know them, and, mm. and that's just the way it has to be. And then you 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 know it's it's really unfair for people to suggest that it was the the consultant's fault either, because they can't commission these reviews, and they probably won't get work again if they publicise the contents. So it's a difficult position for them to be in. Um, it's probably unfortunate the IRFU shouldn't have said that they would, you know, publicise the contents. Yeah, yeah. They, they should have known that they shouldn't have been able to, but it was probably um, it was probably just m misinformed communication somewhere along the line. But uh, I am fully in support of the recommendations and all of the work that Amanda has done. Yeah, Good. it's been a tough couple of months. Obviously, myself and Clean and have been working on behalf of the playing group along with Claire Malloy and, and uh, Kira Griffin. So it's been a tough couple of months with all the meetings. Um, but we're hugely welcoming uh, the group over all of the recommendations. Uh, it's the first step for now. It's really positive. Um, and we're very much looking forward to the next step and work and continuing to work collaboratively and in a very positive way with Kevin Potts and, mm. and the RFU to make sure that the implementation plan and that will be the key. You know, the recommendations are there, but now we need to see that the these are recommend uh, that they're implemented yes. and that we can see significant change and, and positive steps, which which Kevin has promised and, and the RFU have promised with their recommendations going forward. So, yeah, um, for now, very, very positive with the recommendations that we made. Yeah, it's good well, to see a bit of positivity, like, and especially, you know, these two Irish legends here, like, or, and you're actually genuinely positive about it. Like, so, obviously, yeah, it's, well, it's, good, it's, it's good to see. Yeah, 
It really is. Like, yeah. Well, the thing is, as you kind of alluded to there, it's it's easy to say it. Like now we need to see it. Do you know what I mean? These recommendations. Now let's get it done. Do you know I mean? Yeah. I, so I, it's like the first step. You know, yeah. I think Barack Obama said, "There's lots done and lots more to do." And and that's yeah. the of thing. You know, it's it's going to be a long road. To, you know, significant changes for any sporting high performance program. You know. In, without going into specifics, you know, takes time. Yeah. Um, and we're certainly in it for the long haul to to work, as I said, collaboratively. Yeah. Um, You're more on the inside than than any of us. When do you think the appointment of a head women's performance is going to be done? Like, is it going to a couple of months? Is it next season? Is it immediate? I think obviously that will be up to to Kevin. I think that's the next step to actually um, he'll release the implementation plan. I'm I'm right with that. Um, to see I what's think so, next. Yeah. I think the recruitment process for that could take a couple of months. Like it depends on where they, if it's an internal search or a, a worldwide search, you know. Yeah, um, how it's advertised, who's going yeah. to make an appointment for the job, who's the best for the job. So I think all we can do for now is, I suppose, it's, as like I said, it's been a tough couple of months to welcome the recommendations as an overall playing group has been hugely mm. positive. Uh, we'll take that in for now. And then the next That's step tough. would be to see what's, uh, yeah. what, what lays ahead in, in the implementation plan, which is yeah. the next step. What I was amazed about was things like not having a full-time nutritionist and stuff that came out in the report. I just presumed you had all that stuff. Was that, was that just like, you were like, oh yeah, that's common knowledge. Yeah, no, like uh, we would have had access to Marcus Shorthall, but Marcus was, uh, I think, over you guys in the sevens as well. Yeah. And um, Ruth Moore Farrell, uh, or Ruth Wood Martin, I beg your pardon, is the head overall nutrition. I mean, there's fabulous people there who work within it, but we would have just been kind of in for blocks. So we, mm. we wouldn't have had access, though. We would have had a nutrition talk maybe at the start. Um, yeah. And then if you needed anything, um, uh, Marks would have been very involved. I know when I broke my leg, and you would have got that, but it was kind of on a needs basis, maybe. Yeah, but um, the thing is, that's just crazy for an international senior team. Like, not well, I think we were privileged in, in a lot of things. You, you don't know what other unions are working off, and I suppose yeah. then um, games evolved, don't it? And and mar margins have to be moved. And I'm sure, you and the sevens would have had yeah. all that and come that's up from a fresh. Exactly. Yeah, we had we in the sevens. We had full time um, access to nutritionists and physios and doctors all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Which is I just presumed the women's fifteens were as well. Like. Mm. Yeah. So maybe no. that's a good part of this investigation. It's like okay, let's yeah. give them what they need now, and it's, yeah. it just shows that what you were saying wasn't full of crap. Like you're like you do need the support. Well, the thing about it is, you know, we're not looking back at, at as I said, like this, we could look, we didn't qualify for the World Cup, we're both heartbroken. I don't think there's one specific thing, unfortunately, that we could attribute to, to that failure. Um, and I think like anything, as we're players in this room, like you have a performance in a game, you review it and you look what you did well and you look what you didn't. So we're not looking at the past, we're looking very much into the future. Mistakes are made throughout your life. You have to kind of learn from the mistakes in whatever facet of your life you're looking at. And that's what we're looking now is we can see what we, we need improvement or what area needs concentration or investment or whatever that may be mm. uh, based on the recommendations. And we want to just get them sorted and make significant changes going forward so that we're successful, we're competitive, it's a viable programme and we want to be world class and up with the Englands and Frances yeah. of this world and being back in World Cups, winning Six Nations, you name it, that's the aspirations we have as as players, um, both Kleena as a current player, me for the players that are there and um, yeah, it's a bright future ahead, please God, yeah. if everything's done right. Yeah, well another big part of it um, is the Director of Sevens and Women's Rugby, Antonietti, stepped down from his role. And before I say my piece, what did you make of that? Uh, was not expecting it, to be honest, but as yeah. I said, we, we didn't know anything. We engaged with Amanda Bennett as players as part of the World Cup process. And after that, we weren't involved in, yeah. in anything yeah. other than that. So. It took you by surprise as well, clean out this. Yeah, as I said, I hadn't been in camp. You know, I haven't been in the most recent camp. So the last time I was in was for November's. Um, so I don't know what it looks like currently within the, you know, the national team environment or even kind of the crossover with the sevens and stuff like that, or who's running what. I know the sevens did have a new coach for the most recent tournaments in Madrid. It wasn't Anthony, it was... It was Aiden. Aiden, Aiden yeah. yeah. Do so really I believe he's doing, he's, do, he's doing a good job there, yeah, I think. The girls um, him, yeah. So I don't know the dynamics of the ins or the outs, what, you know, what happened or whatever, but... Yeah, and I guess our involvement with Anthony was probably uh, quite little in terms of coaching or personal player mm. relationships with him in that kind of facet. It was normally our head coach that took... Mm. Those roles we wouldn't have had as many dealings with Anthony as the sevens yeah. would have directly. Yeah, well, it's, it's sad enough to see because Anthony Eddie, I dealt with him for years, for the last five, yeah. six years, my whole, and he loved the sevens. And obviously, 
it, Sevens was, from my point of view, was his life and he put everything into that. And then he was also the director of rugby for the women's rugby, rugby 15s, which that might be why they've recommended now appointing a head of women's performance, just to kind of separate the two programs, mm. have someone focusing on the 15s, have someone focusing on the sevens. Because at the elite level, where I've been lucky enough to play both, it's that it's nearly two separate sports. Mm. Honestly, like sevens is nowhere near like 15s when it gets to that top level. Like it's just different ways of playing. I won't get into the nitty gritty of it. But I was sad to see Antonelli step away and I know the lads that are still there, most of the lads are still there and they were told at training, after training, that he came over, was like had the whole session, was like, as I'm resigning now, as of immediate effect and said he was actually quite upset mm. and like, he ne like not to point to tears, but lads could tell he was really, really torn up about it because he's put so much into the sevens for years. He's built it up from uh, like, honestly, we would be pulling in AIL players, pulling in academy players, pulling in everyone, going out to DCU on a Thursday night at eight o'clock, like training guys all the way up and got us all the way to the World Cup, the World Series and the Olympics, all on like, do you know what I mean? That's, I know, he, yes, I'm saying, he, you look back a few years ago, there was nothing there. Nothing like, there. To get to the Olympics and that, I remember yeah. when we first said it, and like, when you came out, like, our goal is to get to the Olympics. I'm like, this cycle. And yeah. everyone kind of laughed. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden, like, Ireland had the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. it was... It's amazing, like, no one can believe it, like. Exactly, yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing. It obviously, really, what happened in his comments a couple of months ago weren't, weren't fair, and I just feel like it's such a big punishment now for him to step away from something that he loves. Mm -hmm. And and what I, from my point of view, is that he hit every KPI that he was set out to do with us as a team. Mm -hmm. And people are forgetting that, that he did a phenomenal job with the men's sevens. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the issue now is what the lads, I think, they feel quite hard done by with this whole thing is that, it's all about the women, which it needs to be because it needs to be sorted out. But now the men's sevens with a World Cup only in a couple of months in September in Cape Town, they've lost their head coach. Mm. So now they need to go find a head coach just to like, which just isn't ideal in the build up of a World Cup. Mm. And there's no additional funding coming into the sevens team either, but there's additional funding going into the 15s. Mm. So the men's sevens are just lost out and no one really seems to care about it. Yeah. And the boys feel quite hard done by in that sense that it's just been that side has been forgotten about. Right. Um, so. Yeah, it's just kind of it's just kind of crafted that that's the way it's planned out. But it's also really cool to see that the women's now have what they deserve. Mm. And I'm hoping it kind of starts spreading out towards the whole yeah. the whole system. Yeah, like it's it's hard. And I said, like, it's funny sitting here because I said we've obviously been involved in meetings for months, but we can only speak for ourselves. And we would have worked with Amanda, as did the whole anyone involved in review to give the information. Um, extremely surprised as to what happened this week overall and I don't understand personally why why that's happened or why then I assume then leave him where he was with sevens with you guys and then just look at something different do you yeah. know what I mean I, I understand where you're coming from because why can't everyone have the love? Do you get what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I don't right. see I know what you mean. Like, the no board. one's I'd asking. To be honest a lot of the public didn't even understand that um all of those brilliant things that you've mentioned that Anthony did with men's sevens, I'd say they didn't even understand that that was part of his role because most of the media has been yeah. focused around the failings now. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that, that that's really important to mention because a lot of people it's very would important. not have known that yeah. his job or his talents were so thinly stretched across yeah. three teams. Yeah, the women's sevens, men's sevens and fifteens. That's hundred percent. Look, it's and I know the sevens have so much. Um, the Sevens girls, you know, who obviously are in their rare squad and exceptional athletes would have spoke so highly of Anthony. Um, he did a great job with them. He's obviously done a great job at Sevens. Um, that's not to take away with the great job he's done over the years with the yeah. RFU. Um, but yeah, I can understand why the boys are upset. And that's the thing. No one wants, like you were saying, yeah, the girls are looked after. But yeah. I know we, c I'm sure we can speak for the players. No one wants one area of a playing group within the same union to lose out at the, you know, for someone else's benefit. Yeah. Do you know, we want everyone, like, because at yeah. the end of the day, an Irish jersey is an Irish jersey is an Irish jersey is an Irish yeah, jersey. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. we want everybody, I want everybody, whether yeah. that's under 12s, <laughs> yeah. to sevens men, to sevens women, to 15 men's and women, I want Ireland winning across the yeah, board. And course, I know yeah. I speak for everybody within the union, because that's, that's, the, that's the badge we play under, that's the crest course, we play yeah. under, that's the, the anthems we sing under, do you know? So yeah. it's kind of probably been like, uh, honest and, and truthful, it's been an emotional week on so many levels, and yeah. that includes the yeah. uh, kind of 
Yeah. But it's definitely the lads aren't like, oh, F the women, like they get it. It's like, oh, unreal, that's so good for the women. But can people just remember us as well? And what that, mm. like, we've been working for years to try and get the pay and all that stuff and get more support. And we've gotten to where we want to. And now it's like, now we lose our head coach and we have a World Cup in a couple of months, which yeah. is just a bit of an issue. But anyway, we'll probably move on. I could talk about it for ages. No, it's but just, like yeah. when you just qualified for the Olympics, what were we like? Do you yeah, know, we yeah. were in camp for so long, like, and we were like, we were cheerful, like, because yeah. again, you want. Like we know some of you so well and we obviously know you through your rugby and then some personally when you've met on um within the HPC or, or yeah, in sixty two yeah. or whatever that may be and your yeah. paths cross and like that's the family within the badge and like yeah. that's what I mean. It's it's a hard dynamic, it's quite emotional and uh Yeah, we've it's always been got a on. weird week for everyone. Yeah, I think we women in sevens always get on because we all bonded over like not getting the same sport as the men's fifteens. So like, yeah, we get it, <laughs> don't know, we get it. So. Yeah, yeah, we're getting free yeah. and now you're a Connecticut ambassador. That's <laughs> yeah, <the same>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, By the so, way, yeah. before we finish up, moving on and speaking of Ireland winning, we all like to see Ireland win. Yes, we do. We've got the old enemy coming up now uh, next week England in Twickenham we've yes. lost there the last three times the last time we beat them there was 2018 I was over there myself that famous Paddy's Day on a Saturday snow pelting down we won the Grand Slam but what do you think lads I mean, are we, are we a chance of beating them what do you think Lena I think Andrew Porter missing out now is um, it's a big big loss for us isn't it mm. Mm. Um, do you bring in Keane Healy there or do you bring in a I was thinking this myself no, Keane who would you start I one. would have said Keane Healy before we all realised how good Andy Porter was <laughs> do you know what I mean I would have been a huge fan of Keane Healy but then I think we didn't know what we were missing until we lost what Andrew Porter has become right so do we start so this is what I was thinking this morning in here do we start with Keane Healy because I think we need to at set piece because I think yeah. we're going to target it right big area of the scrum start with Keane Healy because he's so experienced just lock it out Mm. And then when England get tired, if we can run around, get goal ball, he does all that big hard hitting work. We'll probably yeah. only get the 50 minutes out of him. Mm. Do we then bring in Kilcoin yeah. to kind of now more mobile? Things are opening up and now I'd we start so. to really. And as you said, Kel Kelleher's out then as well. So that's more, I know, I'm know i going to say experience, but he's a little bit more experienced than Dan Sheehan. But you know what? I go with that. The Lou said that I go for the experience, but I kind of actually give Dan Sheehan um, the start. Would you? He's I would, like yeah. He is, yeah. No, I said that you like a Keller's going to be out. So I know. So, I'd, so yeah. then I was thinking, do we go with Herring for the experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I the know, big occasion. Dan, Dan Jean's too. Cut your right. You couldn't drop Dan Jean. He's class. No, no, and I think if you nice. have Keen Healy with Furlong, I think it'll balance then. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Mm. So I think that would be my start in front row. Mm. Make any changes? No, no, I agree with you. Dan Sheen has to stay in there. He's playing too well. And I think he's playing so well that yeah. even when Keller comes back from yeah. the New Zealand tour, that he won't get his jersey back. Right. That is Dan Sheen's now. I think that just happens. It's just it's nature of rugby. Nice. Get injured, you have to earn it back. You don't just yeah. go straight back in there unless you're James Lowe. <laughs> well, as I said, I've got one big question for you. Mm. And this is why now, will it be the great O'Shea curse or not? So let's, let's assuming that, I, I'm going to assume Andrew Conway is going to be on the right wing. Who starts on the left wing? James Lowe or Mac Hansen? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. Do you think Conway... all the way back around the circle again. You think Conway has his place in the right wing? I think, Con I can't, I think Conway is completely... Mm. Like, Lowe and Hansen are a similar winger. Conway is a guy... Conway, like, under the high ball. Conway in defence. Conway even chasing kicks. He's just... he's You can't take Conway out. He's a complete winger at the moment. Yeah. He's their best winger. Whereas Lowe and Hansen... That was Italy. You give him a break. Like, you know? I'd start low, though. Right, because we're going to go into a more physical game. I think we mm. need a kicker, left foot, tick. Yep. And I think he is more he is more physical. If we've seen him, uh, his performance against the All Blacks, mm. I think he stepped up. So I think he can bring speed, pace. I think he is a bit of experience with defence and what we would have seen in his early days of inexperience. I think he's he's locked that out. And I think I would start with Lowe, to be yeah. honest, which I know is harsh on Hansen, but I think the... The just magnitude of the game yeah. and, and winning us the championship, I think, is key. So I'd go with low. Yeah, honest. I do agree with both your points in that Conway is just so reliable. Oh, yeah, he's, he's just, just going to nail whatever he does there. It'll be perfect. Right wing, as you said, that left foot exit against mm -hmm. England is key over in Twickenham as well. I think that's what gets James O onto the pitch starting. But then it's so it just feels like so hard done by with Mac Hansen because like, he hasn't done anything wrong. But he's just missed out in the place. Like, hasn't he? Yeah. he has Absolutely been brilliant. brilliant. If it's an open game and Johnny gets, we assume Johnny starts and he gets yeah. to pull the string. Now, he, I thought he was exceptional in real life last week against Italy. As much as the game was over, he just brought to the game line. Mm. He just picked out, he just waited for the lines to be ran and just gave it the ball right in the game line. And as a forward runner, you know, that it's just like, it it's makes your job hard. much easier. You're not yeah. being lined up to like try yeah. and break down a brick wall. So I think, yes, if it's an open, expansive game, yeah, you could see Hansen getting in, but I don't see it being that next week. I think mm -hmm. in the first kind of 
could be 60 minutes before it really opens up for us. Um, so, yeah, like when Italy were at full complement, they attacked our breakdown last week and slowed it down. I didn't think we looked as mm. comfortable as we had. So, yeah, yeah I still... Not against Hansen, I just think, yeah, low next week has to get the nod. Yeah, and I just reason. like if Hansen doesn't start, he's not going to be on the bench either. Like, they're going to put a utility. Yeah. Well, we're going to yeah. manage that now because you're not going to, you need somebody to cover more yeah. positions. Like, of course. Like, Obviously, Keane is going to be at 15, and then centre partnership. Who are you putting in the centre, guys? What do you think, Cleaner? That's a tough one. Like, you stick with the same two? I really like Henshaw. I think he, you know, pound for pound, what he brings to the game is. He's not a big guy, but his defensive efforts are just outstanding. Yeah. I'd controversially go for Bundy and, and Henshaw. Yeah. Bundy and Henshaw, the so. two big boys. Like. I like, yeah. I'd, I'd go up Bundy and Henshaw as well. Like, I like as, as, as good as Gary Ingalls is. Like, I, as, I think Henshaw is better at 13. You get more out of him at yeah. 13. Yeah. And Bundy like, is, is just a monster. So yeah. I, think, I, think that's, I think that's our strongest combination. Even though Gary Ingalls is playing some of the best rugby of his career at the moment. Yeah. That's where we go back to the... At the What's Darren Cave's old, old phrase? You know, the depth, the depth, the, <laughs> the depth. depth. Yeah. yeah, that's what we have at the moment. Yeah. Like, but it's good to have that, and you'd rather, you know. Yeah, Bundy and Gary played so well together, together in the first two games, and now it just seems wrong for the Gary not to be picked. But I agree with you. That's Henshaw that's thirteen, it. reliable. Yeah. Bundy, Bundy's going to play at twelve. Like, well, yeah. I think he's just going to be that yeah. nuisance wrecking ball. Yeah, yeah. just going to annoy you. Who's we'll your back row? I think this will be key. Yeah, I think he's exceptional last be week as running Can't not be there. Six. Do you play Doris and, and Conan I think, at eight? I think Doris and Conan. I, yeah. I don't think they'll be taken. I think that's my back. Yeah, but well. as long as you've got Ty Byrne and James Ryan in the second row. Which re realistically you have like you maybe have five have. back rows there. Yeah. Now, do you know? Yeah. Right. Definitely. Final prediction. So before we wrap up, who's going to win? Ireland or England? 2017 Ireland. I think it's going to be a decent win by Ireland. I think it's going to be like 30-something. 32-14 Ireland. Oof. Ireland for the win. Yeah, I'm not Ireland for the win, but I don't. Really? I have no clue what the score. I yeah, just think England win. aren't in a decent place at the moment. I know they won last week, but yeah. like they won by kicks, really. Yeah. And there's been a lot of holes in their defence. And I think Marcus Smith is holding them together. And Don Brent's playing very well as well. But mm. they're not the England of old. No. Like They're still in that building stage. And I think Ireland... If it's a nice day, nice weather over in Trickleham next Saturday, I think there's going to be a big score. Johnny's in good form. Yeah. We're moving the ball. We're picking yeah. holes. I think Sounds it'll good. be a good day in Irish eyes. will be That's smiling. Happy yeah. days, happy days. Well, unfortunately, it was a lovely. That was this was lovely, but we, we have to end. That's it. We've no more, no more time left. What do you think of us? Are we all right? Do you, do you like being <laughs> on the show? Do. We didn't scare you away now. Will you come no. back? You? <laughs> I will come back. If you'll have me back. Yeah. Of course we'll have to do. Actually, you know, we'll invite you. You two can be first guests on, on our cleanest show. There we go. There we if go. we can find an there editor to take out <laughs> all the cursing. <laughs> yeah. The cheeky needs to coming on the show and pitching another show. Honestly. You're welcome. <laughs> we just said you could be first guest. <laughs> it's been great to have you on as always. Thanks. Yeah. You'll be able to afford his feed all night. I will not. We'd make him coffee. Thanks. Thanks very much. You're you were incredible thank and really good much. to have you on as well. You've been Thanks unbelievable. Thanks very much for having me. And of course, thank you to our partners, Bank of Ireland, proud sponsors of the Four Irish Provinces. Until next week, guys. Thanks, Thanks very much. Slant. Joe presents House of Rugby, United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the Four Irish Provinces.